Uh, Timothy Hamilton from Columbus, Indiana, and um, Divine Family Barbecue. Divine Family Barbecue. I like that. I like that. So what got you started in barbecue, Timothy? Uh, first, I started, like I said, uh, just cooking in the backyard on a gas grill with my mom cooking hamburgers. And then I kind of lost it from there. And it really didn't... It didn't really work itself back around until um, that I had joined the military. I joined the Army. Okay. And how and did the Army uh, how the Army wake that barbecue in you? Uh, we always had to eat in the mess hall. We always had to eat, you know, basically what the government prepared for us. And that got okay. old. <laughs> That got old, and when you're around, when you're in the military, you know, in the military, you're around a lot of different um, cultures, a lot of different uh, people from all over the world. So, uh, what we would do is uh, we would pitch in money and, and go to the store and buy up a bunch of meat and just have a cookout. Okay. So really, it found itself back and kind of worked itself back around to me when I was stationed in Germany. And uh, one time we all <clears throat> pitched in some money, went to a German uh, butcher and bought up a bunch of meat, you know, like ribs and bratwursts and pretty much you name it. We bought it and put it on the grill and then they asked me to cook. They asked me to cook for them and... That's when it reawoke itself. Okay. Oh, uh, where where'd you serve at in Germany? What what Man, fort? Uh, Mannheim, Germany, in uh, okay. early barracks. My brother was at the other one for a while. Uh, Bol Bolberg or starts with a B. Bomb holder. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he uh, he was out there for a few years and. He, he traveled the world out there, I'll tell you that much. He was going everywhere every weekend. <laughs> All right. So, so anyhow, so you get out of the military and you've been doing some cooking. Uh, how did, uh, you know, civilian life lead you to, uh, how long have you been out of the military, by the way? Well, I got out in 2002. That's when I actually got out from Germany in 2002, right after 9-11. And um, I stayed out for a while. And then I went back into the guard in 2005. Okay. And stayed in the guard for another five years. So I've done a total of 12 years. Wow. Um, okay. Thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. If it wasn't for individuals like you, our freedoms to barbecue would not be as prevalent as they are now. <laughs> yes, sir. So I appreciate that. Um, so right now, where, where are you at right now? Uh, you're doing catering. Is this your full-time thing? or No, I do it on the side. Uh, right now, I just do catering only. Um, okay. I started out with a food truck, um, an older one, and sold that one, then bought a different one and had that one for a while. Started to do a lot of different fairs, um, events, local events, barbecue events, stuff like that, catering. Um, and then, Do you still have a food truck? No, I sold it, and then I've just been kind of concentrating on uh, catering. But um, I've never really stepped out 100% in faith and just launched it full-blown. I've always kind of did it part-time. Okay. And uh, as far as – I know you, you have a couple different products out there, right? Yeah. You've been working on rubs. uh you have something that I've I've called the whammy jammy sauce. Right. Me and my buddy me and my buddy have coined that term for your aged Worcestershire sauce. 
Um, it's really good. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's just, it's too good for me to use consistently because I go broke buying it from you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a little more expensive than your average wish this year, but I haven't been using too much wish this year as a binder anymore. I've been noticing a lot of the briskets I've been getting. Uh, they don't really need a binder. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the, the coarseness of the pepper and salt I'm using or what, but I seem to do pretty well with without a, a binder. So uh, what are you cooking on right now? What kind of rigs you got right now? Well, I started with uh, a 250 gallon, like a real legitimate smoker. I started with a a 250 gallon oil drum. Okay. And I oil used drum. that, yeah, an old oil drum that they, uh, like you'd see connected to a home, and it would have like a reddish oil in it to heat the home. And what they would do was they would take those, drain them, cut them, and make them into um, burn them out and make them into backyard, you know, cookers. Okay. So and I it, started on, does that work like a stick burner? Well, using yeah, wood, wood in charcoal. those or no charcoal, charcoal and a mixture of wood. Okay. And uh, what are you cooking on now? Uh, I guess uh, you could say I graduated from one of those and bought another legitimate cooker. And I went to a 250-gallon reverse flow. Okay. Um, and had that one for a while. And it just kind of built up from there. But I've always stayed with, after charcoal and wood mixture, I switched to um, just strictly wood. So now, right now I sold it as well. I sold another one that I had. Um, but right now I'm just running a... 24 by 36 patio reverse flow smoker. Okay. Is it made by like a local fab guy or? No, it's it a, a fab guy out of Texas. Uh, Pro out fab of Texas? Pro fab, yeah. So I got to I got to tell people the story how we met. <laughs> so to, to give you guys a short version, at one time I was looking for a cabinet style cooker, reverse flow type of system. And there was a guy selling them out of uh, Florida or Georgia. I never found out exactly where this guy was from. And right. he had his own page group where he was advertising his cookers. And long story short, uh, this guy ended up being a big fraud. Um uh, I did you ever get a cooker from him? No, I paid him a deposit. Luckily, I was able to. He got your deposit. Good. Yeah, I was able to escape through uh, pull some strings that probably weren't strings and, and get my money back. Right. So, so this guy comes to find out he uh, he owed a lot of people cookers, and he just. Uh, yeah, I think eventually the court system caught up with him. Um, I haven't really heard whatever transpired, but this guy owed probably 50 to 100 people cookers, and he was not delivering. So for a while, uh, there was a bunch of us trying to track this guy down, and, and uh, that's how I met Timothy initially um, was – because we had both been conned by this guy. So anyhow, that's a little brief story on how I met. Um, so back to you. So uh, where would you like to take your barbecue venture? Where, I mean, would you like a brick and mortar eventually? Would you? Yeah, brick and mortar, uh, as well as I'd like to get back to a food truck as well. Okay. Is that, I mean... 
brick and mortars out there do they do they do a lot of business um i'm not I'm not very familiar with any places outside of california so um i I envision America like Orange County here, which is, I know is totally off base, uh, the amount of people. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure on how brick and mortar works out there as far as would it be in town or would it be just on the side of the road somewhere? Where would your ideal location be? Uh, my ideal location would be in a, you know, in a good location, a heavily traveled area, but uh, I've always wanted to do a drive-in, like a drive-in barbecue place. That's kind of my dream to do that, bring back the old school where people come up in their cars, you know, maybe their hot rods, whatever, you know, whatever people drive and just come up, pull up, and a car hop comes out and they get a nice cold, an ice cold root beer and... Uh, you know, just drive in and, and have some really good barbecue. That's kind of always what I've envisioned. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And uh, if somebody dropped a blank check in your lap right now and said, hey, go buy yourself three cookers, no no, no fun, no caps, what, what would you go out and purchase well, I've like I've also had a pellet cooker. I'm more just my personal style. I'm more of a, a wood burner, um, stick burner. I would probably go out and buy uh, all reverse flow. I'm just kind of I'm not really cooked on offset, but um, I would just stick with reverse flow because it's what I know. It's, yeah, it's quality. Um, right it's just in my so for, just because i didn't know at one time so i kind of want to explain like when you say offset you mean a standard flow offset cooker where the smoke comes in to the chamber and it, it enters in with no restriction really and it goes across the cooking grates out right. the stack on the other side where a reverse flow offset is something where the smoke comes into underneath a baffle, wraps around that baffle, comes back over the top, and exits out uh, a stack on the same side as the firebox. Correct. Um, so my understanding is uh, when you do a reverse flow, you're you're not only cooking with the smoke, but you're cooking with the radiate the the radiant heat that comes off of the baffle, mm -hmm. um, versus just cooking with the smoke that travels over your meat. Uh, some people say they provide a little bit different taste. Um, I think mm -hmm. the Texas guys all say that. Um, I don't know enough to <laughs> to to say yes or no on that, but. I definitely think both both cookers have their their usefulness and and their their place, you know. Mm -hmm. So is there any is there any you know big brand or any maker out there that that you have your eye on? So when you when you have that opportunity, you'll pull the trigger on on I'm like a Moberg or or a primitive. I I'd stick with the uh, the guy that built my patio. He's Pro Fabrications out of uh, Texas. Okay. And uh, just a good, honest, honest guy that that builds good quality smokers. I mean, he's not. I mean, like anything, he's not perfect, but you know, he does build a good smoker for a good, reasonable price. Right. That's sweet. That's sweet. So what do you like to cook for yourself? What's What would you say your favorite thing to cook for Timothy or your family? And if you would share with us kind of your method or your seasonings that you would do with that with. Uh, my go-to, my number one seller, whenever I'm out and about and doing things from a food truck and such, and my favorite is uh, loaded pulled pork nachos. Okay. And 
my family loves them. It doesn't matter if it's brisket or pulled pork, but they seem to, you know, go lean toward uh, the pulled pork. Um, it's my one of my favorites to do, um, and basically I use the uh, sweet and spicy rib rub. It's the same rib rub that I think that you've used. I use it on pork butts as well. I mean, it's basically the same. There's no difference between that. It's your own rib rub. Right. Okay. So um, years ago, I had a friend that um, had a, a recipe for hams. And he liked to score the hams, you know, basically cutting it in a diagonal pattern on top to help. Yeah. Um, dissipate some of the fat cap and I do that as well with the pork butts and then I just heavily season it with the sweet okay. and spicy pork rub and what I do is I'll usually use a, a mixture of cherry and apple because cherry and apple wood is pretty prevalent here in, in Indiana um I really love like pecan and, and peach, but it's a lot harder of a wood to get my hands on here. So I usually okay. stick. I usually stick with uh, cherry and apple. Nice. And I'll I'll do a mixture of it unless I can get a good load of, of oak. And oak's pretty prevalent as well. Um, but my favorite, one of my favorites, obviously, is cherry and apple. And I'll do a mix of cherry and apple. I'll let it cook for about roughly four, four plus hours uh, to get a good smoke and to get a good texture. Okay. After about, just depending on the bark, after about four hours of smoke, um, I wrap for an additional four hours just depending on the weight it's usually about an eight hour cook uh roughly okay. with the pork butts because obviously whenever you use all wood you know you don't want to over smoke it uh, yeah so that's the main reason for the wrap is to to protect the meat from getting over smoked and obviously to help break it down you know for okay the, the tenderness yeah. And so, then from, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. From there, from there, I'll just pull it and um, take nacho chips and I'll place a bed of nacho chips down and then put a decent amount of pulled pork on top of the chips and then smother that with cheese, nacho cheese, and then, uh, Red onions, jalapenos, sour cream, and sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. Nice, nice. And that's pretty much what I do for pulled pork barbecue nachos. Nice. And that's a good seller where you're at, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, probably seven to, <laughs> seven to three. I mean, if someone comes up and they see ribs and they see other things on the menu, uh, it's probably seven times out of ten, they'll choose those nachos. Oh wow, that's pretty good. And what is what do you get for something like that where you're at? Uh, small, I usually sell it for nine, and then the large I sell for eleven. Okay, nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, um, any uh, things you got in the works coming up uh, as far as product or as far as rubs or sauces or anything like that? No, uh, I still do. I still have my sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. still have a regular sauce, the whammy jammy sauce like you, you talked about. Um, still have my sweet and spicy rib rub that I use on pork. And then I'm still trying to still tweaking and perf trying to perfect a, a brisket rub. And I think I've come up with one that I really like that I'm actually that I'm actually using pretty often, and my wife seems to think it's a go-to rub now for brisket. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, 
I don't know. It's it's probably been over a year that I've gone straight to salt and pepper. I was buying a, a one that I liked prior to that was from uh, Doctor Smoke. I had to read the label. Um, he's out of Texas, and he had a really nice coarse brisket rub um, that I was buying in in the larger quantities, but. Ever since I've gone to just salt and pepper, uh, the people that I've been selling to, they've, they always rave about it. And it's like, wow, like, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like I didn't think salt and pepper could be, you know, that, that important, but I could see, you know, uh, at least from from the Texas region or whatever that man that it's it's really important you know you guys yep. up there or up there but you guys um, do you guys put sauce on your beef or or do you guys eat that pretty much dry like everybody like Texas yeah I would I I would say more often than not it would be dry. Try, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been, I've been having a lot of good um, experience with. I've been buying the five peppercorn blend, okay, and grinding it down myself to a coarse grind, um, and using it on ribeyes as well as obviously with the brisket rub, and I really like it. It's really defined. I mean, it just, it's really good. Huh. Nice. And it's a five peppercorn? Yeah, it's your white, your red, your green, your black, and pink. Okay. And nice. There's just the peppercorns, and you grind it down to whatever, you know, coarseness you want. Okay. What are you using to grind it? Like a... Coffee, coffee grinder coffee yeah nice well all right is there uh anything else you want to leave us with um tell everybody where to find you on facebook instagram uh youtube if you got youtube um let us know where to check you out yeah it's uh divine family barbecue.com is the website Facebook is the same thing, just Divine Family Barbecue Catering um, on Facebook. And then Instagram is just Divine Family Barbecue as well. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, <laughs> we had well, a, rock, a rocky start, but uh, we got it. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. I should be it. able to, to edit down the front of this video and get it out on YouTube probably tonight. So yeah, cool. I'll send you a link so you can... Share with all, everybody that you might think are interested. Okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, bro. Take care, man. God bless you. You too. Yeah, you too. All right. That was episode 13 of The Cud. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. If you would like to be on The Cud, let me know. Shoot me a DM in Instagram or Facebook. Dino Dan Smoking, Dino Dan, D-Y-N-O-D-A-N, Smoking, and uh, we'll schedule a time. Thank you. Peace.